Hello, my name is Amelia Saad. I'm part of the Advent Health family, and I'm here today with Dr. Chaitan Patel. He's the Executive Medical Director for Spine Surgery at Advent Health. And we're here today, we removed our masks because we're staying six feet away in order to follow social distancing guidelines. Thank you, Dr. Patel, for being here today. Oh, thanks for having me. So if you recognize his face, it's because he has been in the news lately, and it's because he invented the first of its kind system that is improving accuracy in spine surgery. This system is called EyeSight, and we're here today to learn from him, from the source, what it is. So thank you for doing that. Well, thank you for the opportunity to share this exciting new technology with everyone. You know, I love technology in general, including at home. So this is just natural for me to get to use some new technology in the operating room. Awesome. So before we dive in, please leave any questions or comments that you have below on the chat, and we'll make sure to get those answered. So let's get started. Dr. Patel, can you please explain us what is eyesight? So EyeSight is an augmented reality system, and what it's basically doing is taking my surgical view and augmenting it with other screens I have in the operating room. So for example, you see that there are two screens right here, and with this system, I have the ability, instead of looking away at that screen and then maybe shifting attention to that, bringing that right here so that I don't have to shift away from the patient. I can focus on the surgery that I'm doing, still see the patient clearly without any obstruction, and right above it, I can see the other digital information that I may want. So you see two screens here, but there's a lot of other information in the operating room. For example, there's an anesthesia screen that shows how the patient is actually doing in surgery physiologically. There's another screen that shows what the images are. So for example, it's a herniated disc. You know, where exactly is it in the patient's body that I'm doing surgery on? If it's cancer, it'll show me what kind of cancer, where it is. So what this system allows me to do is pull any of those pieces of information, whatever I want, so that I can use the piece of information when I need it in surgery without being distracted and going away and going somewhere else to go get it. That's incredible. And can you please explain to us how was the process of inventing this system? Well, it you know started out with basically a very simple concept. Um, you know, I teach a lot. I teach spine surgeons. I've been doing that for almost 20 years now. Um, so as I started teaching this technology and some of the other technologies, what I noticed is that some surgeons pick it up really well and some surgeons really struggle with it and just can't get the results that they're looking for. So I started looking at it as a teacher, asking myself, well, you know, is it that I'm not doing a good job? What can I do better? So we went through some steps and figured out an easier way of teaching other surgeons. But then I also realized that one of the big problems is that when you're looking at something down here and trying to do surgery, and then you shift your attention away somewhere else, if you watch my hands closely, my hands move a little. Mm -hmm. And so we actually did some videos and things to look and see what happens to surgeons when they shift their attention away. It's called attention shift. And what happens, you actually move. It's a little bit, but we're in precision surgery. A millimeter in spine surgery can be the difference between having a great outcome and doing really well versus having nerve damage. So for us, that little difference creates extra work to realign ourselves and to line things up so, you know, the state of technology was where it was back when I was thinking about these things over the last 20 years. Um, I took on a position uh, for North American Spine Society. I'm the section chair for robotics and navigation. So it really impressed upon me that I need to try to come up with a solution to make this technology uh, work better in the hand of every surgeon and not just few surgeons. Um, so I wanted to solve this problem of having to look away, number one, and number two, having any piece of information that's in the operating room that's available, right? Yeah. So if you think about your iPhone, you know, you can check your email, you can have an app to look at something specific, uh, you can uh, go on the internet, you can get your text messages, the phone, all of that. When you come to the operating room, I have none of those luxuries. All I have is this or walk away somewhere else or turn away and look. I thought that was crazy. I'm like, this is a problem that needs to be solved because it will help patients. If you think about it a different way, you know, a lot of when you're driving on the road, a lot of times you see accidents and you wonder, you know, what happened. Um, and then over time, commercials that come on TV for safety saying, hey, don't be a distracted driver, right? Yes. Distracted driving is bad. Well, guess what? Distracted surgery is even worse. Do you really want a distracted surgeon that's looking away from surgery and somewhere else? I don't think so. So I thought that there was a problem that needed to be solved. And that's kind of how I went about it, is I put different pieces of technology together 
so that anything in the operating room can be seen while I'm seeing the patient unobstructed. And the other big challenge was getting all these pieces to work together where it's real time. So for example, if I'm taking an instrument and I'm moving it, but if it moves a second later, that's not gonna be very helpful. So we have to be able to do these things real time. And that's why even though the genesis of the idea came along a long time ago, mm -hmm. the technology really had to catch up to get to a point where all these things were feasible, computing power, different pieces of technology, display technology. So I'm so excited that we're finally here. And um, you know, honestly, I got the system up and working in 2019 with a friend of mine. Uh, and we've been working on it since then. He's working on the orthopedic side. This technology is um, you know, something that can be deployed, I think, in all of surgery. Mm -hmm. I'm practicing in spine surgery, um, so therefore, spine surgery is where I'm looking to deploy this. Mm -hmm. And he's looking at orthopedics, uh, radiology, cardiology. There's a lot of different ways to use this. Wow, it's so impressive. And it sounds like it has a lot of benefits to the patient. So you mentioned reducing the risk of making any mistakes because of attention shifting. Are there any other benefits that you could share with us that are good for the patient when using this technology? Yeah, I, I think there are some basic things. So for example, you know, we use x-ray to determine the right level of surgery when we do surgery. It would be really nice to be able to look at the patient when we're putting a marker in and not look away somewhere else at an x-ray screen to figure out is that the right spot, right? You really, the ideal scenario would be looking at the patient and looking at the x-ray screen. This technology allows you to do that. The other thing that this really helps with is efficiency. So we talked about safety and accuracy, but I think what I'm really the most thrilled about is finally technology is helping us get better and faster, right? So oftentimes when I've taught new technologies and I helped develop the robotic system um, that improves accuracy, but the drawback was it takes a little more time to set it up. Um, we accepted it, surgeons, because we want higher accuracy. And that's just the way it's always been. But for the first time in my career, there's a technology that not only improves what we can do, but actually makes it faster and more efficient. So I did a clinical study on how fast you can put in and how accurately you can put in particle screws. These are screws that go within the bones of your spine. Okay. And when we tested the two groups with and without this technology, you're twice as fast with this technology. So not only are the other benefits there, but the efficiency is there. And what does that actually mean to a patient, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it means that your surgery gets done faster, so you have less anesthesia, you have less blood loss, and who doesn't want a faster surgery? Wow. I have never known a patient says, hey, can you take longer to do my surgery, right? They want smaller surgeries, faster surgeries, outpatient surgeries with quicker recoveries. So that's really what this technology brings. Definitely, thank you so much. So we're here today in the OR, so let's take advantage of that. Can you explain to us what you have in front of you and how, how you're gonna show us how it works? Sure, so this is an example of a typical surgery we would be doing on the spine. Okay. So this is obviously not a real patient, so we've got a mock-up ready to go here. And then what we're doing is showing you the same kinds of things you would experience in the operating room. So we are using a computer system um, that shows us exactly how to accurately put those screws in. Uh, prior to that, there's a system that comes in that takes pictures, detailed pictures or a CT scan that sets things up and that's the other screen you're looking at. Okay. And we've got the instruments in place so you can actually see the fun part. The fun part is where you put in the screw, you put it in accurately, you do a great job so the patient has a great outcome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, put that system on so you can see how it works and you can actually watch me put in a screw in this model. Awesome. Let's get to it. All right, let me go ahead and put the uh, eyesight on so we can look. You can see that there's a lot of different screens in the operating room. Here's an example of two screens I may want to look at. The one you see on the right is the one we're going to demonstrate right now. So what I'm doing is I have these glasses on. I can see the world around me, including my patient and the surgery view, and I can also see what that screen is showing. So therefore, what I can do is when I'm putting a screw in, I don't have to look away. So this is one particular part where I'm going to put in this instrument into a channel we typically create into the spine bone. And you're going to see that I'm able to do that without looking away at all. So here we go. So this is the instrument that I'm gonna use. And then I'm looking down at my patient. I'm ready for that part. So what I'm doing is going ahead and putting that in. And as I go ahead and turn it, I put that in all the way down. And then I can go ahead and maintain my visualization of the patient and take it out. It's that simple. So what it really allows me to do is pay attention to the patient 
and the other information that I need at the same time. So why does that matter? Well, part of it is that I'm not looking away and shifting, but part of it is also that as I'm going down, if I were to hit any tissues, any retractors, anything like that, I'd be able to correct that so that it doesn't cause an error. So I think that's a huge advantage in addition to not having to look away. That's amazing. While Dr. Patel takes out his eyesight glasses, I want to highlight how amazing it is to see using artificial intelligence in the OR and how it benefits the patient. So Dr. Patel, who else is using this technology? Right now in spine, I'm the only one using it, but I have shared this with other surgeons outside of spine surgery and they're testing it in orthopedic surgery in general. So there's circumstances where you're putting in screws for, um, for broken bones, for example, where you're doing a hip or knee replacement where they find it useful. And there are uh, about 10 surgeons right now that are interested in using this in spine surgery. So I'm literally in the, part, in the process of creating other units so I can actually have units to share with these other surgeons so they can try it. That's so impressive. And you can use these uh, eyesight glasses during any a spine procedure, correct? You can use it not only in any spine procedure, you can use it in any procedure, period. Because wow. really what you're doing is you're taking all these different pieces of information that's available and presenting it to us while we maintain visualization of the patient. So we don't have to look away at all. So in other surgeries, for example, it may be critical to know exactly what the blood pressure is of the patient or how the patient's doing, as much as what did they look like before surgery and some imaging, as well as looking at a video screen, if you have a camera at the end, looking at x-ray, MRI, so all those things that we routinely encounter in all of surgery can benefit from this technology. Wow, and what would you say to those patients who are scared of spine surgery and sometimes they are suffering from back pain and they don't wanna to go to the doctor to hear you're gonna need surgery? What would you tell them? Well, the first thing I would tell you is that you're not alone. You know. No one wants to go get surgery done if they can help it for their back pain. So keep that in mind. But the first step in your journey is really to get informed and to understand what's wrong with you, right? So the way you do that is go see a, a spine specialist that's interested in understanding exactly what the source of your pain is. Once you do that, they should present options to you. Why? Because majority of the patients that have spine problems can get better without having surgery. So those other options, for example, maybe medications, physical therapy, injections, and of course, surgery is an option. And if you want more information, you can always go on our website. Uh, there's a section called Spine You, where we describe all these different options so you can help yourself and learn. And there's some entertaining videos you can watch that help you with preventative care as well. But once you've kind of gone through that journey, if you decide that surgery is the right thing for you, then you really should have a conversation, not just about the benefits of surgery, but also the drawbacks or potential complications of the surgery. And once you have all that information, I think that's the right time to make a decision on whether or not surgery is right for you. It was amazing to experience firsthand today with you, how does this new technology work? So thank you for that. We're lucky to have you on the Advent Health family. So any other thoughts that you want to uh, leave to our viewers today? Well, I just want to share that this is just the beginning and not the end. So technology is always improving and we want as patients, myself included, if I need any care, the best technology available to give the best result possible. This is the first step in making sure that we take the information that's available in the operating room and present it without having to look away or being distracted. But I think the next evolution of this is really this becomes my assistant. So I would have an augmented reality assistant in the operating room. It's very similar to having a physician assistant that typically hands me the uh, instruments that I would need, except this is digital. And then what we can do here is have an augmented reality assistant that helps us in the operating room. Wonderful. So if you have any questions, if you want to reach out to Dr. Patel's practice, you can call 407-303-5452 or visit ahmgspinehealth.com. Thank you so much for your time today and for viewing. Any comments or questions, please leave them on the chat. Thank you.